to Build Brunch, the daily morning show where we talk about the latest topics in entertainment. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Allie Colbert. And I'm Lucas Tim. Hi, Woo! everyone. Hi, guys. Good morning. Today, we're going to talk about the return of our favorite British super nanny, Mary Poppins, Coca Cola's foray into cannabis drinks, and actress Nicole Kidman opening up to Marie Claire. But first, the 70th Emmy Awards aired on NBC last night. Saturday Night Live stars Colin Jost and Michael Che hosted the star-studded ceremony, which honored the best in television. Amazon, the, Amazon's The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel and HBO's Game of Thrones took home top honors, with the highest honor hands down going to the girlfriend of director Glenn Weiss's, who was proposed to during the event. Let's break it all down. I mean, where do we start? Where you do we start? With the hosts? Uh, Colin and Michael Che. Sure. Let's how start do, with the hosts. How host. do you think they did? <laughs> I'm not the okay. biggest fan of them on Weekend Update. Um, yeah. They look a little tired to me at times. This, my, I, I, I think <laughs> they're really smart guys, and they, they have a certain sense of humor. But the thing with hosting award shows, you have to at least act like you are happy to be there. You have to buy into the fact this is the most important event of the year. Whether it's bullshit or not, I love the Emmy Awards. A lot of people look at me like, what the fuck are you watching? Who cares about honoring TV people? Mm -hmm. But you have to act like this is a huge deal. Let's celebrate TV. I just feel like they kind of act like they didn't really care that much, which is their shtick kind of. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they were just the right people to host this award show. I think we're so used to seeing people like James Corden and Hugh Jackman and right. these guys who could sing and dance and do all these very theatrical things. And they really did stand in their mark and tell jokes. Were the jokes funny? I thought so. I thought they were witty and smart and a little push the envelope. But as far as like the delivery, it was just super deadpan. And I think when you're like talking to millions of people, you have to smile occasionally. That would right. be my only thing. Like you have to add some energy to it, like right. you were saying. But I do think what they were saying was funny. Like I thought, the, I thought they wrote smart jokes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess so. They were, I mean, they're really smart guys. I, yeah. I maybe would have liked a little more of a introspection into TV this year. I mean, yes, they did that opening number, which was kind of like funny. Like yeah. we solved diversity, like we yeah. solved the problem, which was which was what kind of funny. But whether it was usually they do like videos, opening videos of the host kind of go into the TV shows or some sort of thing to like, to like celebrate the diversity foray of just programs mm -hmm. out there. I felt that could have been really interesting in a way to kind of look at TV this past year. But yeah. they were fine. They just weren't, they're not my all-time favorite host of the Emmy Awards. Yeah, you think they'll let them host again? I hope not. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought it was kind of dull. And even if it was funny, I feel like a whole big production, if you start the energy that small, it's really tough for everyone else following. Totally. So even if someone's just presenting, it's hard for them to come in and yeah. bring energy for the whole group. Yeah. Well, even they started with the high energy thing, right? Yeah. With the singing, the yeah. we solve diversity problem. And then it did like level yeah. down when they, yeah. did, when they started. And I mean, it, right? I felt like the presenters, when they would come on after Michael and Colin did their thing, all of their jokes fell pretty flat. Yeah, yeah. Some the of them, audience. Some of them were funny yeah. though. Eighty, I thought Eddie Bryant was. Funny. I thought that whole thing when they like to talk about the history of like adding banter yeah. and they were really like robotic. I thought that that worked. Was that with Bob Odenkirk? Yes. Yeah, they, that was a really good delivery. Yeah. I enjoyed. That. What about? Did you like the My Rudolph Fred Armisen like? Bad historians and historians. It was okay. Maya and Fred are so so funny, and like yeah. nothing had me like cracking up. Like they, those two have made me like yeah. laugh until my sides have hurt before. So like they could have. I don't know. It just yeah. everyone missed the mark. I feel. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that wasn't a strong enough bit to have it repeat throughout the show. Being bad at something, running out of time, it falls flat. Right. And then to bring it back and play the same yeah. joke over and over again was kind of like, ooh, that's a choice. Yeah. For a <laughs> sketch 101 student to make. <laughs> totally. Yeah. It's yeah. tough because I think we all love them both so much, and I still like. You know, I gave them like laughs, but it, like you said, it wasn't like a yeah. overwhelming experience. Yeah, and they're both so. They both have the. Like, potential to be so funny. I know. Yeah. Well, and let's talk about the big winners and losers of the night. I think what, I, at least I was very surprised about, but um, we all have to mention, is that Marvelous Mrs. Maisel won almost all the major... They're like, we regret to inform you. We regret to inform you. I mean, I know what the I show is, but is it that good? Well, I, okay, so I just watched it. And <laughs> it is a very... I think it's a very well-done show. I this is, I just read it. It was Amy Sherman Palladino's first time winning the, those major comedy yeah. awards. Uh -huh. And the first time anyone's ever won Best Writing and Directing the same night. So good for her. Wow. It is well-written, and I think Rachel... Did she direct it, too? She though? directed the wow. pilot, too. I just don't... I don't, I don't know. I really thought Atlanta really pushes the boundaries of yeah. comedy television and thought, wow, that was a show. Even Barry. Yeah. That yeah. should have been like that. These two shows really pushed the boundaries they shouldn't recognize, but I kind of understand. Marvelous yeah. Miss Maisel, though, is like 
people are now getting obsessed with like stand up, and we've seen right. that a lot on mm -hmm. television with like I'm dying up here, this, you're, there's another crashing. crashing yeah. So people, this is like so of the moment, and for some reason, this show has captivated so many different audiences, like young people, like my grandma watches it, like my mom watched, like everyone's watching it. Mm -hmm. People seem like, and also it's kind of a. It's a per like a period piece that feels sort of new at the yeah. same time. So for some reason, this is like destroying it. I mean, I like the show. I'm not obsessed with it, but I like. Yeah. It. Question for you: Is the writing good? Because Amy Sherman Palladino, we know, wrote Gilmore Girls. She's known for her fast dialogue, and I mean, is that what is so captivating about it? Is the writing? Because I could get that. It definitely it, has that like quick, yeah, like nature to it. Don't you feel that? Like, yeah, I think it's a good show. Did I expect it to sweep like this? No. Right. Um, I was kind of surprised by that. And part of me just doesn't understand if the uh, people who are voting didn't watch the rest of the shows. Yeah. I kind of like don't believe that they watched Atlanta, in my opinion. Right. I'm like, you played it safe. And I think this The Marvelous Show is really safe. I think it's good for your grandma, it's good for your grandkids. Right. Um, so it's kind of sad to see something so safe win. Right, and she, Rachel Brosnahan <laughs> won for Best Actress in a Comedy, and she's up against Issa Rae in Insecure, which I think is like one of the shows really mm -hmm. pushing boundaries and reaching a whole new audience and having a whole new conversation. And Issa Rae is this new star. The Samsung commercial they had yeah. with Issa Rae last night showing her like early days on YouTube and her doing her videos, and then now she's like this Jogger, juggernaut. Yeah. Like, I got teary eyed just watching her success story has been so. It's just like the Emmys are like, and none of these award shows are interested in them. Yeah, at all. they don't Like, care. they just want to award the shows that, like, are accessible and sort of like. Mainstream? Yeah, mainstream, but like, maybe like a, a drop of like saltiness or edginess <laughs> that's like not really, it's not really like pine, like. It just doesn't feel edgy in the way you want it to be, but they're like, oh, this is a little risky. Yeah. You that's, know what I mean? Like, and that's why with these voting bodies, which we're, which we're looking, like with the Oscars and the Grammys, but, uh, you know, the Emmys also does have a history of, like, awarding past winners a lot. Like, mm -hmm. Modern Family won so many years in a row. Veep and Julius Stripus kept winning all those years, and Veep and Julius Stripus, they were incredible. They weren't eligible this year. But it was, besides Mrs. Maisel, which were new winners, it was a lot of the same people winning again. Peter Dinklage for Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, which he's great. And Game of Thrones won Best Drama, Game, which yeah, is so, so well deserved. So speaking of drama, it, it was really like, um, unlike comedy, a very dis dispersed group of winners. Like everyone kind of yeah. won a little bit. Like Claire Foy won for The Crown, which That's I think true. was, I, I, I was not surprised. I think a lot of people wore. Game of Thrones won drama. The Americans won writing. He won lead actor in The Americans. So it was kind of different in the drama, um, but, but you know. What do you guys think about that? Do you think Game of Thrones is good to win? Like, I, yeah. Yeah, I definitely think Game of Thrones <laughs> deserved the win. I mean, there's no real comparing Game of Thrones and This Is Us. Like, right. we were kind of... Right. I mean, it's just they're completely different different animals. I mean, Game of Thrones is, like, so intense, so epic, so cinematic, and This Is Us is people crying. And Handmaid's Tale would have been a contender, but they just won the Golden Globe, right? And they won the Emmy last year. Oh, the so Emmy last year. Game of Thrones was an eligible yeah. him. But okay. I think with Handmaid's Tale, everyone's just like, yeah, this is depressing. We get it. I, like, yeah. so is real life. Let's look at dragons. Yeah. Samantha like, Bee's joke on that was really funny. Yes. When she was like, you know, go watch the Handmaid's Tale. It's lighter than what's going on politically in our country. Yeah. Samantha like, Bee, like, I really enjoy her. I but last night at the Emmys, when she went on stage and was like, oh, I really love this dystopian show called The News, I was like, that is a joke made on Twitter every five minutes. Right. You couldn't well, think of a more interesting joke to make in your Emmys speech? Yeah. But guess. that goes to your point that the Emmys are sort of like a safe kind of but then she predictable kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, then she thing. made the joke. I, they recast the lead. I like Robin Wright. That was a shot <laughs> at House of Cards. I mean, I love Samantha Bee. And, and then speaking of Samantha Bee, you know, she was up against John Oliver, who won again. And again, I love John Oliver. I was kind of just like... Can't we give it to Samantha B or I someone who hasn't like won we're before? we're choosing between like 15 different of the same. same. We've talked about that, person. yeah. It's just like copy paste, copy paste, and we're just like, oh, James Corden, John Oliver, like, who cares? Yeah, right. except for Henry Wink Winkler. Yeah. He won for Best Supporting Actor. Yeah. Which, like, I didn't realize that was the first time he's ever won an Emmy. Right. And That's he's so iconic. Cute. Like, yeah. I think that was like everybody was giving him a round of applause. They stood up. Like, when you see this guy who literally we know from the Fonz, he was like in his 20s and now he's in his 60s and his entire career has been in Hollywood. And to see him celebrated like that, I think was an amazing way to start the show. Totally. Like, it actually pulled me in for a little while. And you know who was a surprise win was Standy Newton for Westworld, and yeah, she was funny. She says, I don't surprise. believe in God, but I'm going to thank her. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty funny. I love that. Really good. And she, she's, she's really, if you have problems with the show, she's really good in it, but I really thought of Shannon when the limited series categories came uh. out because your boy won big. Yeah, I'm so happy that Ryan Murphy won. I remember on this show I said I would commit a, a series yes. of murders if Dan <laughs> Chris didn't win, and I'm happy to announce I don't have to murder. Hey. And, we're, we're, and we all get to yeah. live, really. Cause, yeah, because yeah. I was going to murder 
murder, uh, for sure, 100%. <laughs> um, and I, yeah, it was so great. Like, I, was, uh, I, I got stuck on a train, and I was missing the beginning of the show, and everyone I wanted to win wasn't winning. And when I finally hit my couch, that's when Ryan Murphy won, and I was uh, like, oh, perfect. And then Darren Chris won right after that, and I was so excited. That was great. They both had really great speeches, yes. too. Yeah. Well, speaking of surprises, um, the proposal. Oh. Yeah, we didn't talk. Yeah. What did you think of okay, that? Okay, I think we have a mixed bag. I'll start by saying, I think this guy was like kind of a nerdy dude. This was a big gesture. She seemed on board. What he said was really sweet, bringing up that his mother had just passed and then giving her, you know, his mother's ring. I thought it was like very sweet. And I think because they could drink in the audience this year, all the celebrities were like really hype about it and like stood up and clapped and everybody seemed- No, they couldn't drink. I think they could drink. Uh, no, I, I, no, I think, no I think, didn't Justin Timberlake and Jessica Biel post when you find out you can't drink at the end? Oh, okay, maybe I, maybe they made a joke at the beginning of the show. Okay. But then, either way, the uh, audience was really into it, and I just felt like it was like this bright spot in the show. So yeah, it was a little cheesy, but I don't know. I was more romantic. Yeah. I thought it was cute. Well, yeah, the guy who I'm won the, the guy who won yeah. literally the most boring award managed to like steal the whole night. So congrats, as a fellow yeah. st- scene stealer, aspiring, <laughs> I, I I admire that. Yeah, it's also, a good way of being you, remembered. Yeah, like you. Will this guy who's like, you know, normal looking guy, kind of bald, some long hair, looks like he didn't leave the, you know, yeah. the... Yeah, look at him. I mean, yeah. good for him. He looks you know? so happy. I, said, I hate it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I hate that he did that. I think it's the wrong place, the wrong time. I think it's inappropriate. It freaks me out. I'm just like, dude, do this in your living room, not my living room. Go home. <laughs> Like, I just think it's so bizarre. Yeah, we're not watching The Bachelor, and this right. isn't a sports game that you're throwing something up on the Megatron. I just think this is so fucking trashy. Really? Yeah, oh I gosh, hate that. Yeah. I'm a romantic. I'm like, grand gestures this are appreciated. This is so not you're romantic, in. though. I don't this think it's for, romantic. For them, it might be, though. I think the proposal is such a personal thing, and like, no, I would not want to be proposed to on national television. That would yeah. be a nightmare. But she seemed really game for it, and he Uh-oh, obviously Lucas, knew her, her, like, sensitivities, and he wouldn't have done it if it made her uncomfortable. So I think... For them as a couple, this was really special. I mean, yeah. It's just, it's not about them. I know. Why this, not? This guy <laughs> wins like them. every year for this award. He like, does? Yeah, yeah, he produces the Oscars and wins every, they always give the Oscars Isn't telecast. Isn't it weird that the Oscars wins Emmy? I, I know, yeah. well, because on TV or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like now every, now every producer of an award show is like, fuck, we can't cut those stupid awards now because yeah. they're going to propose right. on live TV. I don't think this will happen again. Obviously, I don't think it's happened before. Yeah. I think this guy wanted to go big and he hit a home run. I don't know. I hit don't a home run. Okay, but you know who I hit, think hit a home run? Angela Bassett for just being <laughs> Angela Bassett. Just Did you see what she, how, how, how she looks? Oh, my God. She is an immortal, a goddess. She is 60 years old. Whoa. Flawless. Flawless. I have never looked that good and will never look that good. Also, Betty White looked damn good. Yeah. She is 96, by the way. Wow. Yeah, 90, yeah she was great. Yeah, yeah I mean, this, another significant thing about this award was that um, Netflix tied with HBO for most wins, which is a big deal, but Netflix still has never won a major, like, best of, best series category, so <sighs> the, sl- ne- the HBO is trying to fight them off. Yeah. Like, hey. <laughs> Something <laughs> tells me we're going to see that soon. Oh, um, for sure. Anyway, moving on, in a candid interview with... Marie Claire Nicole Kidman dishes on her marriage, career, motherhood, and activism. She also opened up about leading with your head versus your heart. She states, I always say I'm a pretty even mix, but I'm probably dominated by my heart. If you don't come from a feeling place, you just end up with an enormous amount of technique. That's what I always say. Yeah, Yeah. uh, I just love actors talking. They just are so filled with nonsense. Uh, (laughs) You know, just like... The, the space you need to be in if you, if you haven't followed the method is really quite, just shut up, you know what I mean? But uh, she's nice. She, was, <laughs> she gave that quote in comparison to Keith Urban when they yeah. talk about guitarists and she'll look at him and if he will say like a guitarist plays with their head, meaning technique, their heart, meaning emotion, or there, which I mean, I think means like their sexuality. Their like penis. if you can play guitar yeah. with your dick. Yeah. That's um, so cool. So I possible. can't wait to see people play penis. instruments with their genitals. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know that's coming. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure it's already yeah. happened. So can it's people happened. shred with their dicks? I don't know. We should have Slash on the show. I bet he's done that. Yeah. Um, I actually really love Nicole Kidman, even though I just bashed actors. Yeah. I just think they can be whatever. I really love her. I think she's beautiful, classy. I think she's so talented. Very. So many of her movies were my favorites growing up, like Moulin Rouge, oh, God, I was obsessed yeah. with. Like I just really love her. Yeah, no, she's really good. I mean, of course, Big Little Lies, she won the Emmy last year. And, like, she, she talks about her activism, like, against domestic abuse. And, and also, she's talked about this new role she's in. Um, uh, and not... Boy not, Erased? Not Boy Erased, but oh, we'll no. talk about that. But this, I feel it's a like dispatch. And some new role that hasn't been, trailer hasn't been released, but how, like, dark she gets. And, like, she gets in this very, like, hell state to live in. So huh. she does seem like a method actor that really gets, like, invested into her roles. And 
Um, someone who can play both glamorous and also, you know, quite average looking, which I yeah. think Boy Ray, she kind of plays a mom from the South and whose son is gay and they put him in conversion therapy. Yeah. It's based off a true story. Um, so yeah, I kind of like her in those mom roles. She, she has mastered the emotional mom role. Yes. Her and Lion. Yes, Lion. Like, I was oh done God. at the end of that yeah. movie. Yeah. Oh. But when they really strip her down and she does, I mean, she the way she cries and emotes is true. I mean, and her I know she's talking about technique and all of that, but like you can see it translated on yeah. camera, which is why she's an A-list actress. You know, totally. like, she's so phenomenal. Mm -mm. Yeah. Which and is why she's an A-list actor. I love that she kind of got this happy ending. Obviously, being married to Tom Cruise seemed like ha, a really ha, hard right. period for her. And she's, you know, not connected with her grown children. But she has this Keith Urban life with her daughters in Nashville. Yeah. And she just seems, like, really balanced and happy. Yeah. And totally. her work then has reflected that, I feel like. And, and she's figured out how to clap. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> okay, she had on it's expensive, hard when you expensive rings, and she didn't want to ruin that. No, totally. I get it. It was just the one. I remember that those Academy Awards. You saw her like this. You're like, yeah. what the hell? Also, she's she long half fingers. seal. Yeah, her fingers are so long yeah. and bendy. I love them. Um, I wish that the, her reasoning for clapping like that was just like, I'm an alien. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just an alien. Why not? It would have been better if she's like, oh, that's not how you clap. Like, yeah. Like I am. Clapping human. hurts. Don't you hate going to shows where you have to be like, oh, it kind of hurts. Well, the best way to clap is like this, right? Yeah. I just do this. Oh, and I then people are like, haters. Hey, I used to pretend, because when, when I first saw Harry Potter, when Dumbledore claps like this, I just thought that was the coolest <laughs> he thing. He does? Yeah, in the beginning, so when Harry gets up, then he claps like this. But every other kid, he's like, fuck, I don't know this kid. <laughs> but then Harry's like. Oh. <laughs> so that was my thing. I was like, oh, I want to just be like this. I don't really care. Oh. Wow, the people yeah. listening on a podcast are having a field day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Clap right into your mic, guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Remember Snap? Yeah. Um, yeah, she's cool. 51 and... Awesome. Killing it. Yeah. Killing it. In other news, Disney just treated fans to a little more than a spoonful of sugar with a new trailer of Mary Poppins Returns. The highly anticipated film is a sequel to the 1964 classic Mary Poppins, and we'll see Emily Blunt reprising the role made famous by Julie Andrews alongside stars Lynn manuel Miranda, Meryl Streep, and Dick Van Dyke. Let's take a look. How'd you do that? Do what? So you've been off filling the children's heads with stuff and nonsense. You've forgotten what it's like to be a child. Everything is possible. Even the impossible. That tub, that tub exit. That is yeah. epic. I so off we go. It. Ooh, into the Dick tub. Dick Van Dyke looks so good. Right? Why does he look like he's like 98 but could still get it? <laughs> like, even through that white beard, I'm like, yes, yeah. please. I co-sign this completely. Right? I used to watch the Dick Van Dyke show on Nick at Night. I love him. I know. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I love him so much. And <laughs> I he's, wasn't even thinking he, I know. That. And he's aging so well, though. I think it's because yeah. he's like tall and he like knows how yeah. to like, Was he? Do you think that was him, his moves for real? Like his real moves? Yeah, or do you think they were puppeting his old man leg to move that fast because he, he was moving really fast. It could be Disney magic there making yeah. it. Yeah. I think he's super spry. It wouldn't surprise me. Is he's he... always been a really physical actor. Yeah. So I think he has that. Why? I'm literally just down. looking at you. You are the one who feels old. Is no. He... <laughs> I'm just waiting for you to say because the way you're looking at me, you're like, you're literally fangirling over Dick Van Dyke. She's he's hot. Out. He's hot. How, is he single? Do we know? I think he's better. Can we do some? Can you can you research that, please? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can we find out to be single? Let's have him on the show. Yeah. Also, Emily Blunt is my favorite, one of my top three favorite actresses. Love yeah. her. She's so great. I feel like if anybody's gonna like do this justice, it's her. I've also never seen the original Mary Poppins. Wait, what? what? Oh, get out. That's so unfair get out. for you. Get out. No, 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 no. You no, 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 no. You've seen the Dick Van Dyke show, but you don't. You have seen Mary Poppins. Yeah. No. I also used to watch the Mary Tyler Moore show and I Love Lucy. I've never seen Mary Poppins. What? Have you not seen Mary Poppins? Because it looks, here's the thing. I think we are so much our parents' children. So like this is just like something Rita was not going to watch. And so she I wasn't guess. going to buy the video cassette for us to watch it. You know what I mean? Like I my mom is that. not a Mary Poppins woman. Well, I are you going to watch the original before you watch this it's one? It's just the I don't know. It's a sequel. It's a sequel? Yeah. No. It's a remake. 
It's a sequel. Well, she goes in. I don't know. In my profit, it's said it's a sequel. Yeah, the kids yeah. are adults. It is. Now. And it's so so this is so this is a this is a book. <laughs> so Mary Poppins is a book series which I often actually forget about. And this is a sequel, which is kind of so it, which I actually like about it, like wait. 60 years to do a sequel, but like it kind of continues the story. And actually, apparently, this is gonna be a little more like the books because a little uh, bit darker, I guess, because you know, it takes place in the Great Depression, England, or whatever. Yeah. But, but, um, I'm excited for it. But yes, this is, it's not a remake, it is a sequel, but with the same characters as the it's kind of like the one. what they did with Peter Pan and Finding Neverland, right? Like, totally. they're just kind of switching it, flipping it on or Hook. Or Hook. I loved yeah. Hook, that Hook was great. That's so good. Oh, You've Steven Spielberg, Hook? great movie. Oh, but I know about Hook. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Mary Poppins is the first one. I was, of course, a classic Lucas movie that I loved. I love. I remember when I met her at Disney World. Oh my God, I cried, guys. Uh, she was so, she was so great. So I'm really excited for this. And also, how about just like Meryl Streep is just in this movie? Right. Who knew that? I didn't know that. Surprise. And she's like, there she is in the trailer. Hm, it's me. Yeah, they played the trailer last night at the Emmys, and they were like, and also starring. I'm like, what? She yeah. can be in whatever she, she wants. She just does whatever. Oh, she totally. Wants. She, they just make up a role for her. I know. Like, what? Is, yeah. What is she in the movie? Just she's Meryl Streep as. Meryl Streep character, yeah. <laughs> just like, and she can do whatever she yeah. wants. But I think it's nice for her to do these bit roles, you know? Like, she has, she does, like, the headlining roles, but then, like, she also just sneaks into movies. Like, even Mamma Mia, she was only in it for, like, a second. And I think it's right. just, like, easier for her. Just, like, pop in, get a paycheck, be seen, but, like, Sounds not have great. to work that much. And she, yeah. she yeah. liked Emily Blunt, apparently, right? Yeah, they've been in three movies together. They did Devil's, Devil Wears Prada in the Woods and this. And Emily Blunt was actually, I think, on Kimmel recently, and she was like, can Meryl Streep get her own movies? Like, why is she following me around? Like, right. I love that she can joke with Meryl Streep like that. Classic Meryl. Anyone just else following people around. And Emily Blunt is so funny too. Like I bet you yes. she and her husband John Krasinski. Krasinski yeah. Like I bet they are just like hilarious together. They're one couple that I would just yeah. love and, to watch them have sex. And that's a cool. <laughs> 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 no, I yeah, I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. Um, but that and now also I remember when they got together. Like, they weren't be like a typical pair you would think. Like oh, John <laughs> Krasinski in the office and. Emily Blunt, but like when they are, they're like, oh, that works. And She's John funny. Krasinski has, oh, this is back to John, but yeah. like he's had kind of a blow up. Like he yeah. used to be goofy and now he's kind of like sexy. Mm -hmm. And he grew that facial hair. Yeah. yeah and he's in a yeah. new Amazon show. He's an oh, action, he? like yeah. Jack Ryan, whatever is that what's called? Oh, yeah, I keep, oh, yeah. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, they play it all the time. Like, this is not the right audience, okay? I'm not watching yeah. Maisel, so we'll then watch Jack Ryan. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah. Cool. I'm excited to see this movie. Well, Coca-Cola is in talks to make a cannabis beverage with CBD, a medical component in marijuana. Even though CBD does not get you high, it does help to relieve stress and anxiety and soothe sore muscles. We'll have to stay tuned to see what CBD-infused product Coca-Cola reveals. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. <laughs> Um, so what do you guys, so basically marijuana has THC and CBD in it. THC is what makes you high, and <laughs> CBD sort of has anti-inflammatory properties and, um, you know, other self-soothing, uh, yeah. Elements to yeah, it can like soothe your muscles, help yeah. with anxiety, help yeah. with depression. There's a lot of different ways to use CBD. There's, there's oils, there's powders, you can get it in a cream and put it on your skin. It's a really versatile agent. What's funny about this is uh, all the beverage, all the beverage companies have seen a dip in sales because, as we've learned, sugar sugar is really bad for you. Right. And I think like a can of Coke has like 42 grams of sugar in it. It's like Insane. horrible for you. <laughs> Literally like diabetes in a can. And so they're trying to find new ways to market to consumers. So now they're like, oh, we'll put CBD in it. It has healing properties, but it still has a very unhealthy amount of sugar in that's, it. That's so, so unless funny. they un adjust that, it doesn't really no, matter. They're going to solve yeah. it. It's like 42 <laughs> grams of sugar, but hey, you got these healthy, cool properties right. of CBD oil. Woohoo! Right, you'll be less Drink anxious, Coke. but you're still going to, like, your pancreas is going to right. collapse. Right. And, and, and Diet Coke, Coke tastes fun. I, there's a Diet Coke trailer, which I think is really funny, with Jillian Jacobs, I think. Oh. Um, and she's kind of just as, like, just drink it, which is yeah. kind of funny. Also, if you want a Coke, drink a Coke. Which is their yeah, if you want to live in a yurt, <laughs> drink it up. That commercial's so stupid. Right, but, but it's funny, because basically saying, like, yeah, we kind of know they're not healthy. It's just drink it. Yeah. Like, whatever. They yeah. Don't have to, like, it's just like a... Well, one once in a while isn't going to kill you. No. Totally. I think Coca-Cola is smart to jump on the cannabis bandwagon, because CBD oil and CBD and other, you know, properties yeah. are becoming really popular, and I don't see mainstream beverages that have CBD. No. And that's legal. That's not yeah. marijuana, so... Well, and allegedly, in like 1903, Coke had um, actual cocaine Coke, in it. Yeah. Yes. So well, that, this yeah. is kind of returning back to their traditional roots a little oh, bit, yeah. Yeah. I think. I'm excited. I hope that they don't just throw CBD into regular Coke and they make like a new, actually healthy yeah. drink. 
And I'm excited for CBD to become so mainstream that basic people stop explaining it to me. Because, <laughs> oh my God, everywhere you go, there's like someone who's like, says so CBD. And it's like this stuff in marijuana, but like it's not going to get you high. And you're like, shut the fuck up. I'm so well, tired. You live in sorry. LA. No, no, we had to on the show. It's not about you. It's about like the people at parties who you're like, oh, is this like sativa or indica? And they're like, what? I don't know. And then they're like, this one's CBD. And you're like, shut the fuck up. You also lived in LA though. And yeah. I feel but like, like LA people like are always ahead of the curve. When it, it's not, but LA is so ahead of the curve when it yeah. comes to anything yeah, medicinal with CBD the, yeah. and THC. Like, I think most of the people I in my circles are like just learning. Right. right. Yeah, it's that's like, why I said, yeah. and I stand by. I can't wait for it to become mainstream <laughs> yeah. enough yeah. that we don't have to hear about it at every house party where someone's like, so like you break it down and they like go into like this like faux like science talk mm -hmm. and it's just like, can yeah. we like yeah. Yeah. throw a TV on this person? <laughs> but they're not the only company. Um, I think also the company that owns like Svedka and Vodka yeah. and Corona, they're looking into adding CBD to things. And Lagunita's Brewing Company, which is a beer, they're actually talking about putting THC in their beer, which I actually read that an article last year about this trend of people wanting to put THC in right. beer. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some brands available currently right. that do do that. But so Lagunitas would be the biggest. Most of these companies, these American companies, are working with Canadian companies. Yeah. So the right. thing is, like, and this is also go back to where you're talking about, you know, vote in the midterms, guys. If you want this stuff to come to America sooner, uh, you, you, this is all comes down to if who you If not, just drink a Bud Light and smoke pot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> not, yeah. You know and what I that mean? figures it out Two too. Two birds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to get but the vote. But also, you can vote. You can vote. <laughs> no, but it's interesting. Like these are they're developing with Canadian companies, so it's going to take a little bit for them to actually be able to come here. Yeah. But it's cool. They're working on it. So, like Shannon says, it can be <laughs> more mainstream. mainstream. Seriously, it's just every party. It's one girl being like, "Do you guys know about CBD?" And it's like, "Can we trap her in a closet?" Stop. <laughs> I like the different ways where we could drop a TV on her and then know. trap her in a closet. I, I want to know who this one girl is that's <laughs> following you no, around to every party. It's literally this type of girl who like shows up at a party and I was like, hey guys, look what I got. Anyone have a headache? And you're like, go home. <laughs> go home, Diana. Diana. Nobody wants a part of your little CBD like Avon company that you started. We guys, we hit a trigger. <laughs> <laughs> I like Shannon it's, triggers. It's just like, it's 2018. Like, yeah. let's move on. Well, guys, uh, enjoy the weekend. That's all from us. <laughs> Thanks everyone. Oh, it's not the weekend. Thanks everyone. <laughs> you know what? I'm going on vacation tomorrow, so I won't be here, so that's what I was thinking. But thank you for watching. Watching. We'll see you tomorrow, same time, same table. Uh, actually, no. I don't want to leave yet. I don't want to leave yeah. yet. I think I'm going to stick here for a second. Is that cool with you? Yeah, is that cool yeah, with you? Yeah, let's just stay here. Uh -huh. Guys, it's Allie's birthday. Oh! Yay! Yay! So we want to see happy, happy birthday. birthday. Are we spirit. rolling? Yeah. Uh, yeah this is, this live, is live on the internet, Allie. Yeah. Oh my God. Thank you, guys. Yeah. This is so sweet. 25 <laughs> yeah, years old. You know, thank you. A quarter of a century. Speech, 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 speech. speech. I worked so hard for this Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But you were saying, so you're going to go out of town to celebrate. So we're going to miss you for the next couple of days. So we wanted to make sure we gave you a proper Oh, my off. God, you guys. I'm so surprised. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm really shocked. I walked in this morning, and I was talking to our producer, who's, like, my best friend. And I was and I was like, it's my birthday. And he was like, oh, yeah, happy birthday. Oh. Yeah, we purposely didn't say anything beforehand. That's nice. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Thank but you. Thank I you could tell you were looking at us like, assholes. <laughs> I know, I came in very casually. I was like, happy birthday. Yeah, I was like, happy birthday. She's just like, Oh, I didn't Thanks. even say it. I was just like, I didn't even look at you until now. I know. You were being so mean this morning. <laughs> it was because I was trying not to ruin the surprise. <laughs> Well, Allie, happy birthday. We Thank love you. having you at this table with us every day, and we're going to miss you for the next couple of days. But enjoy quitting. your trip. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Whatever. And we'll see the rest of you guys tomorrow, same time, same Woo! time.